another Children's Corner Sew Along. Today we are going to be working with the Children's Corner Lucy and we are going to embellish the front with what we're calling a teacup tumble. So this is an applique and if you purchase the kit, the applique kit, you have everything you need in that kit for your applique. If you did not and you're using your own supplies, on page three of the instructions there is a supply list of what you will need for your applique. And let me talk about the pattern itself for a second. Um, this is just two pieces, a front and a back, and you are gonna place both on the fold of your fabric. Be careful when you need to place a pattern on a fold that you do it pretty precisely because uh, shifting it one way or the other can make a difference in how the lining and the fabric fit together and just how easily the construction will go. So just um, pay attention to your, your fold and where you place that line. Um, this is the new um, Lucy. And if so if your pattern looks like this, then you know you have the new. And when it came time to reprint the Lucy, we for the past few years have felt like um, we like the way the Lucy hangs when the uh, the fabric and the lining are hemmed separately. So what we changed is we just lengthened the Lucy uh, front and back an inch, and that allows for an inch hem. So you'll have a notation on the newer um, patterns that say a one and a quarter inch included for the hem. So that means we're going to be turning it a quarter and then hemming it one inch. So if you um, have the old pattern that would like to try doing it this way and hemming it separately, then we will have a blog that will show you how to do that. And um, if you choose to construct the bottom of it the way you may have always done with this, the front, uh, the fabric and the lining stitched together at the bottom, we will also have a blog or video that will show you how to do that if you, uh, if the instructions themselves are a little bit confusing. So I think that's everything. Gather your fabric, go ahead and cut out the front and back of the Lucy, and gather everything you will need for the appliques, and we will get started. Now that you've got your dress cut out, lay that aside, and we are going to work with our appliques. The first thing I want you to do is each of your fabrics, I want you to lightly starch those. What that does is it um, will make it easier to have smooth edges on your appliques by having it, um, it doesn't have to be real stiff, but just uh, lightly starch each of your fabrics. After you've done that, then you, you know, you'll need to cut out your pattern pieces and you will need for the cup, for the cup part, you will need to cut three bowls and three interfacings and um, you've got your fabric for those. The, the top part of the cup, the top, uh, the top cup, is um, a white bouquet if you're using um, our kits, and you also need to cut three of those and three interfacings. For the saucer, you'll just need to cut one and one interfacing. And then for the cup handles, what you'll be doing is you will, you don't have to cut this out completely. It's just easier if you leave it like that and then cut a little square of your heat and bond, trace the handle on there, and then fuse it to the wrong side of your cup fabric. So you'll do that with all three of your cup handles. Once you have your pieces cut out, you will pin them together so that the You'll pin an interfacing to each fabric piece and you'll pin it so that the interfacing is on the, the, the fusible part of the interfacing is on the right side of the fabric. You might even want to underline that because that's going to seem a little strange. We're not actually even going to fuse this interfacing to our applique fabric. So the, the rough side will be on the right side of the fabric. And that is true for all your cup pieces, all your cup top, and your saucer. After you have those cut and checked to be sure that you have it right, because if you don't have it that way, as soon as you 
stitch and turn, you will have interfacing fused to your applique and that's not what you want. So after you pin them, I would go back and check each one. On the saucer, you're going, these are quarter inch seam allowances. On the saucer, you're going to leave a space about an inch and a half or so um, at the top of the saucer and that's how you'll turn that is through that space. The tops, my pattern piece, the tops are just stitched along the very top, not both edges. So it'll be easy to turn that. And then your, um, your cup, you will actually stitch all the way around, quarter inch seam allowance, pivoting at the corners. And then I'll show you how we'll turn that um, in just a little bit. I think that's enough to get you started. I'll see you in a few minutes. Now we're ready to trim and turn on your cups. Be sure that you clip across the corner at the top of the cup on both sides. And then as far as clipping, just along the bottom part of the cur uh, curve of the cup is really the only clipping you need to do. But do trim to an eighth of an inch. Do that with all of your pieces. With the cup top, you're just going to flip it. And then for the most part, since you've st uh, starched it a little bit, you can probably just finger press but now's the time you're going to need your parchment paper. Let me move this over here. So what I want you to do, so you can continue that smooth edge right there, is just take your iron and go right along the edge of the applique. That's really the only place you need to um, press. So, Oh, I wanted to also show you, once you've turned the uh, tops, even though you've trimmed, you'll probably end up with a little uh, piece of fabric poking out right there. You can just clip that off because that edge is actually going to be tucked under the cup itself. So you can just trim that right there. Now, for the... Um, saucer, I've already turned, I've already trimmed and turned it. Um, the top part right here where it wasn't stitched, you can actually just go ahead and trim that off because your first cup, when we start to position these, will be positioned so that it's over where that opening is anyway. Now, for turning the cups themselves, I want you to just carefully poke a hole in your interfacing. I'm using baby interfacing. In your kit, you have a lightweight pellon, which is a little um, not as delicate as baby interfacing, but I did not have any pellon at home. So once you've cut an inch and a half or so, um, in the interfacing only, then you can start turning the cup right side out. It really isn't as hard as I'm making it look. Once you've got it basically turned inside out, then gently go in with a point turner and get those points out. Now, especially with this baby interfacing, it's very um, easy to poke a hole in the interfacing, but that really doesn't matter. Um, 
you've got that shortened stitch length, so you're not going to poke through any uh, stitches. And so you can just gently press along that edge. And get those points out. Once you've done that, then you can also just lay it down and smooth the edges like this. And as you're doing that, if you can actually get your point to not to, to actually be under the seam allowance, then that actually allows you to press a little more firmly than if you are on top of the seam allowance and only have um, the interfacing between the point turner. And then again, you can use your fingers and just, <laughs> sticks to my finger, roll the edges with the inner side or interfacing side up so that you can see just a tiny little bit of your cup fabric. Kind of have to roll it a little bit. And once you've done that, Again, all you really have to press is just these edges. Be sure you put it on the parchment paper, though, or you will have a cute little teacup on your ironing board. Okay, so get busy doing that. Oh, also, your, um, your cup handles, go ahead and cut those out. And you can pull the heat and bond paper off the back so they'll be ready to position in place and be pressed down. Um, I think that's all we need to talk about for now. So get busy with that. And when we come back, you'll need your dress front and, um, and of course, all your applique pieces. See you in a little bit. ready for the fun part. This is where you can be creative. I um, am going to try to do this upside down. You'll start by placing your saucer and you can refer to the pictures here, especially this one, if you like the way it is positioned where there's about the same amount of fabric here as there is up here, or it's about the same distance. But there again, that's just totally up to you. Um, I like the saucer to be tilted a little bit because they are tumbling. And then the first saucer or first um, cup will hide that opening in your saucer. And then we're, we're not gonna place these perfect right now. We're gonna see what the spacing looks like. This is a 24 month. If you are making something larger, you may not, you may want to have your dress, uh, your dress on your cutting table or your dining room table so you can kind of see what it's going to look like in the end. And then, um, I would, uh, maybe just put a straight pin in each of your pieces so then you can pick it up and take it to your ironing board. So I'm not even putting the handles on there yet. So that looks about right, about the same amount of distance. Well, you know what? No, because we have a we have a hem here. I think I need to move these up just a little bit. So I'm going to work on this, and once I get them the way I think they look best, I will just take. I took the paper off the back of the heat and bond. So now your your handles will be fused on like that with about, oh, I would say a good quarter of an inch underneath the cup. So I'm going to work on mine for a while and you work on yours. And when you have everything fused, so when, let, me, let me just stop before I stop. <laughs> Um, after you've got it 
and you're pleased with it and you've got it at your ironing board, you're gonna use your iron on a cotton setting and you're just gonna press and lift, press and lift. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do a regular ironing motion like you would do if you were ironing a, a, a piece of fabric or a garment. Um, okay, I think that's all. ready to talk about the blanket stitch. For those of you that aren't familiar with the blanket stitch, it is a stitch that goes what will be off the fabric, off the applique, and then one step onto the applique. This is the widest and longest uh, blanket stitch on my machine. So obviously that's not what you're going to be using, but I wanted you to be able to see that. And then these are the size stitches you will be using. I suggest in the instructions a 1.5 for the width, but you're gonna practice this. So if you feel like you are gonna to struggle to keep the um, stitch that goes straight across, if you're gonna have trouble keeping that on the applique, then bump it up to a width of four, uh, two. So then it would be two for the width and two for the length. Otherwise it's 1.5 for the width and two for the length. So just, you're gonna to need to practice and you're probably gonna to need to try some different stitches on your machine. Um, but ideally you want the, um, the the long bar here to be on the right hand side so that this can be your applique over here. But if you happen to have a blanket stitch on your machine that has the long line on the left side, uh, you possibly uh, will have a mirror image option on your machine and then you can just flip it and um, and stitch it that way. There are other options too. If you um, watch the class that's coming up next, the uh, Bailey applique, it's the same process as far as stitching the fusible interfacing to the applique piece, then, then flipping it and pressing it. And then the sailboat in that project is actually just top stitch down around the edge and you would just use an edge stitch foot and go around each um, shape, whether it's the sailboat or whether you want to do that with your teacups. So just play around, try some different things and just do whatever you're comfortable with. I've finished my um, blanket stitch around mine. I hope you're excited about your dresses. They're going to be so sweet and I know the little girls in your life are going to love them. Um, so next, after you've gotten everything stitched down, we will start with the construction of the Lucy. Now you should have your applique done and I want you to put the right sides of your Lucy together. And if you're working with a bouquet, be sure that you do have the right sides together. You know, Piquet has a, a distinct line on the right side. And so you need right sides together and you're just going to sew one side seam for now and press that seam open. After you do that, um, I'm going to pipe all around the top of my Lucy. It's not necessary, but I do think it makes a nice finished look. You will need, um, well, your pattern on the back says approximately two yards of piping. Of course, if you're doing a smaller size, you won't need that much. So, um, but if you're making your own piping like I am, you probably aren't gonna have one long piece that's long enough to go all the way around the top of your Lucy. So you're gonna have to piece it and have a seam. What you don't wanna do is you don't want to put ends together like that and stitch it. Because if you do, that makes a really thick seam right there where your cord would be. So instead of doing it like that, if you will, again, right sides together, but if you will place your straight ends like that, and then you will be stitching, I'm just gonna draw a line here, like that. 
So you're not gonna stitch from the inside corner here to the outside corner. You're gonna be stitching from this corner over to this edge right there. And let me just go ahead and I'll just pin this so I can show you how that works. So after you stitch it, you will trim that seam real close, like an eighth of an inch. And then you can see when you turn and press it, how it has a seam there at a diagonal. So there is no seam allowance um, laying on top of each other when you fold your um, when you fold your bias for your piping. So get started with that. Uh, if you need any help with making your piping, we have a tutorial uh, specifically on cutting bias and a tutorial specifically on making pipings. Okay, now that you have your side seam done and your piping ready, um, if you are not comfortable sewing your piping on by just laying it along the edge and just guiding it as you sew, um, there are a couple different ways you can do it. You can, um, this is not my favorite way, but you can, you can uh, pin horizontally right along the edge. like that. Um, in our basic construction classes, a lot of time what we have them do, because they're new to sewing and I wouldn't expect them to be comfortable just laying that piping on there and sewing. Um, we have, um, it's called glue based it, so it's a water soluble glue. And I like the, the small bottle, it has a just a small tip so that you can get just a, the tiniest of dots just right along, um, fairly close to the edge because you don't want it um, to be past where your piping will be. And just do tiny dots, just go a little ways and then stop. And then take your piping and put the raw edge of the piping with the raw edge of your fabric you'll have to press and hold it just a few seconds. And then you can move on. And I'm gonna try to get my hands out of the way so I can show you. So when you are about a quarter of an inch from this, from the um, point there, the corner, So when you're about a quarter of an inch from the point, that's when you will clip the seam allowance of your piping so that you can then continue around that corner. Lift this up and show you. So you would do, it would look like that. And then when you're stitching this on, you're still using uh, whatever you, whatever foot you prefer for your piping. And when you get to that corner, you'll stop with your needle down in the fabric, in the piping, and, and pivot, and then keep going. And then when you get to the next corner, you'll do the same thing. And then you will just continue around until you get to your last armhole. Take your time. Um, use pins if you don't have the glue, and if you're comfortable just sewing without either one, then that probably means you've been sewing for a while. All right, now that we have our piping on, we're going to do the other side seam. But first, you're gonna pull about a half inch or so of cording out so that that can be a flatter seam right there. Same way on this side. Just 
So now with right sides together, the pin right where the piping meets, so that doesn't slip as you sew. And then do a few more pins if you like, and then go ahead, stitch that seam, press it open, and then go ahead and do the side seams, both side seams of your lining. See you in a bit. So I came into a little problem that I really just thought about fixing and not saying anything, but someday one of you may do the same thing. I thought I had plenty of piping, no need to measure. I can tell that's plenty of piping. Well, as you can see, it was not quite enough. So I stopped sewing a couple inches, two or three inches up. And then I took the stitching out for about an inch or so of the piping so that I could then place another piece of bias and I cut it a little narrower because I'd already trimmed my piping. And now I'm going to stitch from, trying to get this so you can see it. I'm gonna lay it down here. I'm laying it just like I did when I showed you how to piece the bias. And now I'm going to stitch right here then I'll trim that seam allowance and press this back like that. I'll lay that little piece of cord down in there and then I'll get another piece of cord and um, finish out making that piping so that I can then finish stitching it on. So there you go. Now you know what to do if this ever happens to you or maybe you will learn to measure and not just think, oh, that looks like enough. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, now we have both side seams stitched and pressed open. Your dress is right side out and your lining is inside out so that we can Put them right sides together. And be sure you have the front with the front and the back with the back. Now, if you used the glue based it, you may need to um, rinse that out first because it does tend, to, depending on how generous you were when you put your dots down, it does tend to draw up the fabric a little bit. So um, right here is where I put some glue when I was showing you how to do that. And, and I, you know, you can just feel it's a little tighter. So sometimes you can just kind of give it a little tug and then it will match at corners and seams like you need for it too. But if it doesn't, just know that that just needs to be rinsed out um, before you can move on. So we're gonna uh, match corners. Actually, I think I'll pin with this side up since I'll be sewing with the dress side up. So after you've got this all pinned, matching seams and corners, um, you'll need to put your piping foot back on again. And um, because you're gonna be sewing on the same stitching line uh, that is the line where you attached your piping to your dress. So you'll start anywhere you want but you'll make a trip all the way around and then um, we'll do the next step. Now that you've stitched all around the top of your Lucy, uh, you will need to trim. Trim diagonally at the corners. Clip in around the sharpest part of the curves of the armholes and the necklines. Once you do that, you can flip everything out.
the white popping, uh, white piping really pops on against this lavender. I just chose white with all the different fabrics in the teacups. I thought maybe white or maybe even just a self piping would be good because definitely the focus is the applique. Now that I have both of the front tabs um, turned, I'm going to press just right in that area for now. And we're going to talk a little bit about buttonholes. I've got my pattern here. I'm going to lay it so that my seam allowance is laying right, my, my stitching line is laying right there on the piping. And then I'm just going to take a pin and poke straight down. And then make a mark. And I'm not going to mark the bottom of the buttonhole because I haven't chosen my buttons yet. But I also wanted to talk about how, notice how the buttonholes are not perpendicular to the stitching line. That's because you want the buttonholes to be with the grain of the fabric. And remember, this is the fold line, so that's on the grain. So these are actually parallel to the line that's your place on fold line. The reason you don't want them perpendicular is then they would no longer be with the grain and they would um, be somewhat on a bias. And as you work the button in the buttonhole several times, your buttonhole will begin to stretch just like bias stretches. So even though you might think it seems like that they should be perpendicular, they really need to be with the grain. So thankfully, uh, this fabric, this lined bouquet has lines that I can go by that I know are my grain. So um, once I choose my button, I'll lay my button on and put another dot just below the button, but straight along that line in the bouquet. Okay, I'm gonna finish turning everything right side out and pressing, and then we will talk about the hem. I hope you've enjoyed the teacup tumble. Mine's all ready to find a sweet little girl to put this on. We really look forward to seeing your posts, so please keep the posts coming. And I hope you will make Lucy again. There are so many ways to, um, so many variations that you can do with Lucy. It's great for a summer dress and it's great also for a jumper. See you next time.